forward into the word. The song just dropped in my heart to sing this morning. See, Israel up until this point had been a theocracy. 
They had been ruled by God. God was their ruler. Whatever the Lord said, they did. When the Lord said, go to battle, they went to battle and they were victorious. When the Lord commanded them to go forth, they went forth. And everything they did, they were led by the Lord. You see, something happened when they came into the promised land. The Lord told them to kill all the people that were there. All the Amalekites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all the ites. He told them to kill them. And from a, a modern day perspective, it seems cruel. It seems unusual that the Lord, who is such a merciful God, would ask these people to annihilate. Completely get rid of a set of people. But you see, to understand the Bible, you've got to walk in Bible. That's You've right. got to push yourself in the position. That's and what the Lord knew, because the Lord has foreknowledge of all things. That's and right. what he knew is that if there were people that were left behind, the people would turn Israel's heart away from God. Mm. See, Israel as a nation, as a whole, was God's chosen people. And that's why they had power. That's why they had authority. Because why everything that the Lord commanded them to do, they did. That's yes. right. When Joshua received the commandment to walk around the walls of Jericho seven times, they did it. Now know that Joshua was a man of war. He was a man of battle, so he knew strategy. And I can only imagine how strange the strategy must have seemed to him. Because they were not to have pull any swords. They were not to say a word. All they were supposed to do was walk around the wall of Jericho one time for six days. Not a word, not a peep, not a sound, not a trumpet. Normally, when you go to battle, you announce you're coming. Right. Normally, when you go to battle, you've got your troops all in array and the strongest men in front, and you go with your swords drawn because you're going to fight. But the Lord said, no, listen, I've got a different strategy. See, the Lord is the greatest strategy. And in a lot of ways, it's unfair because he knows how the battle is going to end anyways. So when he speaks things to us, it's because he knows that that's the most effective strategy that we can employ. He knows who we are. He knows the tools that we have because he is the one who has equipped us with what we have. That's right. And so when he spoke to Joshua, he said, walk around the walls one time for six days. And then on the seventh day, walk around seven times. Again, not a sound, not a word, not a trumpet, not anything. Until after you walked around the seventh time. Then, with one voice and one accord, shout for the Lord has given you the city. And you can only imagine how the people that lived in the walls of Jericho, and I'm sure other people gathered around to watch these crazy Israelites walk around the walls. But those Jerichites, or the people of Jericho, weren't laughing when, on the seventh time around, they shouted and the walls came tumbling down. You see, Israel understood that if they're going to be successful, if they're going to be uh, powerful, that they had to walk in every directive that the Lord had given them. That's right. And when the Lord gives us directives, he gives us details, specific details to follow. And every detail is important. Every word, when we read Bible, every word is important. Saul, as well, had received directives. See, back in chapter 10, when Saul was anointed king, Samuel had given him directives. Samuel told Saul in, in chapter 10, he said in verse 8, he said, And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. Now before Samuel gave this command, he gave Saul signs. He said, you will know that this will be true because before you will prophesy. Men will come down and the Lord will change your heart and you will prophesy with the prophets. And Saul did just as Samuel commanded. So you know a prophet is a prophet when what they say comes to pass. So Saul knew that he could trust in the words of Samuel. Saul knew that what Samuel said would come to pass. And so his directives were to go down to Gilgal and to wait. He says, seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee. For you see, Samuel, we've been talking about Samuel this morning, Samuel was destined to be a prophet. Amen. His job 
was to be the priest where at the time of their, the light had gone out in the temple of Israel. The Lord raised up Samuel. Samuel, a man who heard from the Lord, a man who the Lord said, I'm not a word of his drop to the ground. Why? Because Samuel was one who heard from the Lord and did according to the, what the Lord commanded. See, obedience is crucial. Obedience is of the utmost importance. We made a statement before that those who think obedience is, is optional take for granted the law of God. If you think that obedience is optional, even in the smallest bit, then you're taking for granted the law of God. But Samuel didn't take anything for granted. For when the Lord spoke to him, even as a boy, and told him things of what the Lord would plan to do in Eli's house, even though he, he, he cringed to have to say to Eli what would happen, he, the Bible says he did not uh, hold anything back. But whenever the Lord spoke to him, he spoke it. Samuel was a man who understood the importance of the details. He was a man who understood the importance of directives and obedience. And so Samuel issued this command to Saul. He said, listen, my job as the priest is to offer sacrifices. And that's what I'm going to do. So when you get to Gilgal, wait for me. You're going to wait seven days. But wait until I come. Yes. Wait until I get there. And then I'm going to do my job and I'm going to offer the sacrifices. See, every one of us has a role. Every person has a position. Everyone has an identity, if you will. An identity is defined as the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Let me say that again. An identity is the fact of being who or what a person or a thing is. And the characteristics determining this. In other words, for every identity, for every position, for every role that we occupy, there are characteristics that go along with that. Or there are things that need to be done to fulfill that role. Samuel's role was the priest. And part of his responsibility was to offer the sacrifice before the Lord. But Saul, he was anointed to be king. He was anointed to be king. And what an awesome position it was because his, he was anointed to be led. To be led and to lead. The people. And part of the king's responsibility was to lead the people in battle. That's part of the reason that Saul was chosen. When you saw Saul, he stood heads and shoulders above the rest. He was a mighty man of war and won great victories in his time. But something happened with Saul. For even though he was anointed king, even though he had a great position, Saul abandoned his post. You see, the post of the king was to be in the front lines of battle. We know that as we see as the kings would fall along, there were times when the kings went to battle. And the, the position of the king was to be right, right in front. And that's why David got in trouble with Bathsheba, because in the time when he should have been in battle, when he should have been leading the troops, he was at home relaxing. So the king's position was to be there to lead the people into battle. Now, you know that if you're going to go into a battle, you better believe you're going to win. Because if you don't believe you're going to win, then there's no sense in going. And one of the king's uh, jobs is not just to lead uh, in, in terms of a physical leading, but there's a, a sort of mental capacity that you need to be a leader. Because you understand that when you're leading people, and people get discouraged, or people see a little bit of doubt in a leader, and people see a, a bit of lack of confidence in the leader, then everyone starts to worry. So they say, if the leader's worrying, if the leader's uh, you know, freaking out and is out of his mind, then obviously something must be wrong. Here Israel was, God's chosen people. God had delivered them time and time again. But yet they decided that they wanted to have a leader of their own. But their leader, who had been appointed, instead of being on the front lines of battle, he allowed the people to scatter. Why? Because the people were afraid. The people got nervous. Why? Because they saw the Philistines were coming to battle. They saw that the Philistines with all their chariots and with all their horsemen and with all their armed men, they saw the, the, the Philistines coming to battle and they got nervous. But the job of the king was supposed to be to rally the troops and to fight. That was his job. 
But Saul left his position. He abandoned post. He didn't encourage the people, but instead he let them flee whither they go. Instead of rallying the troops and bringing them together, he let the people flee. So when he comes back to Gilgal, as he was appointed to do, 